OTR drivers, keep your business rolling and your finances traveling toward a positive financial future. Make TaxesForTruckers.com your partner to handle the money side of things. Started by the daughter of a long-haul driver, TaxesForTruckers.com understands your business and can help you pay less taxes, keep your books, and track your finances, keeping you on the road towards your financial goals. And they're local, in the Midwest, but available nationwide. Get started at TaxesForTruckers.com. That's taxes, the number four, Truckers.com. The news in 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes. This is LBC News. Simon Marks in Washington, D.C. has joined us. Simon Nasser are going to be quaking in their boots, I tell you. New key is where it's at. Um, Canaveral to new key. <laughs> exactly. Just in a flash. You get it all here on this radio station, I tell you. Now, President Biden, you've lost him to Mexico City. Why is he down there, then? Uh, we've lost him to Mexico City just for the day. He's down there for a uh, meeting with uh, both the Mexican... Uh, president and also the canadian prime minister this is a summit meeting of uh, american leaders they do this on an annual basis and uh, sometimes the meetings are here sometimes they're in mexico and sometimes they're in canada uh, so he's down in mexico city for that but en route to mexico city uh, and i think really because frankly he didn't have much of an alternative he made his first trip to the u.s border with mexico as president uh, i think the white house calculated that overflying that border Order, without President Biden putting a foot on it, was going to be politically very problematic, given the fact that he is being excoriated, both by Republicans and Democrats, for different reasons, for his record on immigration and the way in which undocumented arrivals in the United States are treated. The Democrats, many of them, are furious uh, because President Biden has seized upon a policy first instituted by former former President Donald Trump called Title 42, and it allows uh, border agents to use uh, public health as a uh, screening process and a reason uh, for showing undocumented migrants the door when they are apprehended. Uh, Republicans, of course, argue that Joe Biden is in favour of what they insist is an open door policy uh, on immigration, which is not entirely true, but nonetheless, in the 12 months leading up up to October of last year, 1.7 million people tried to cross illegally into the United States. That is the highest number you can find on record since 1960. And the Republicans argue there's a reason so many people are trying to come to America, not just that they're driven by uh, the problems in their own personal lives, including political repression, uh, the desire for greater economic opportunity, uh, but also because they say President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris essentially have given them the green light and said, come on in. Well, that's also not entirely true, but those numbers don't lie and they do represent a massive political problem for President Biden, often accused by Republicans of caring more about Ukraine's border with Russia than he does about the American border with Mexico and other countries to the south. It's not clear that this brief visit yesterday uh, to the border, to uh, an immigration detention centre, he walked across the, uh, the bridge, uh, visited visited the bridge, one of the bridges that separates the United States from Mexico. I mean, it was brief. It's not apparent that it's going to assuage any of the criticism. And it was notable that Governor Greg Abbott of Texas, very much from the Trump wing of the Republican Party, who was on hand to welcome President Biden to the Lone Star State at the airfield, handed the president a furious letter to him uh, in which the governor of Texas uh, accuses President Biden of putting the physical uh, safety of people all over his state and other states at risk. So uh, immigration is going to continue being a massively problematic issue for this White House, but at least Joe Biden can say that he donned his aviator sunglasses and he has set foot on the border. So that uh, is going to defang one critique of his policy thus far, but it certainly isn't going to defang the others. And as I say, he's got as much difficulty dealing with with Democrats to his left on this issue as he's got dealing with Republicans to the right. Remarkable scenes from Brasilia, Simon, overnight, um, almost as if some kind of Me Too movement had broken out down there. 
Yeah, very much so. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people, or rather thousands of people, uh, descending on uh, Brasilia, the capital of the country, uh, with its quite extraordinary architecture. I mean, if you've seen the pictures, I've, I've actually been to Brasilia once, and this sort of modernist architecture of the government buildings that exists in the city is under normal circumstances an absolute joy to behold. But these thousands of protesters uh, in scenes utterly reminiscent of what took place on Capitol Hill on January the 6th, uh, stormed uh, various government buildings uh, and indeed vandalised several of them. Uh, the authorities in Brazil managed to get hold of the uh, situation last night and dispersed them all. But these are all supporters of former President Jair Bolsonaro, an ally of former US President Donald Trump. Stop me when this becomes familiar. He has made unsubstantiated claims that Brazil's recent presidential election was rigged and that uh, Luis Inácio Lula da Silva the former president who now succeeds him is illegitimate in office uh, and uh, Jair Bolsonaro has spent a fair old bit of time in the last few weeks in Florida with reports that he has uh, not only spoken to former president Donald Trump who remains a strong ally and supporter but may also have received uh, some kind of advice uh, from other figures in Trump world including uh, Steve Bannon, the former president's uh, sort of Rasputin like political advisor uh, and Stephen Miller, uh, a young far right uh, member of the former Trump administration. So I think there's going to be interesting questions for people in Trump world to answer uh, and concerns about what all this says about the health of Brazilian democracy in exactly the same way as there are concerns uh, arising from the January 6th uh, uh, uprising of two years ago here about what it said about the health of US democracy. But uh, extraordinary to see this mob storming Congress in uh, Brasilia and parroting exactly the same arguments, uh, specious though they are, uh, about an election having been rigged. Well, let's talk a bit about Harry. Um, you'll understand we've talked about almost little else um, for a while. We had the reflection of a uh, documentary from an interview from ITV, Tom Bradby. We'd then seen uh, over here a programme that was broadcast on CBS Network last night. And I think your morning shows are still talking about Harry. Uh, yeah, and I think there'll be a lot more to come in the days ahead because this is just the initial uh, kind of blitzkrieg of pre-publication uh, interviews. 60 Minutes uh, aired their interview with Anderson Cooper uh, conducting it uh, last night. And uh, in that, uh, the Duke insisted that he had not uh, written even some of the most cutting passages uh, in the book, as Anderson Cooper described them, uh, about his brother, uh, Prince William, uh, in an effort to harm the royal family Rather, he insisted, as he did in the interview with Tom Bradby, uh, that he is uh, keen to try and jumpstart dialogue and that uh, silence under uh, circumstances in which he claims uh, that he and Meghan Markle are the subject of a leak operation from Buckingham Palace uh, would have been complicity with all of that. In the interview that's airing this morning on Good Morning America, the Duke suggests that his main aim is to get to a point of reconciliation uh, with the royal family. He says if we can get to the point of reconciliation that will have a ripple effect across the world. Uh, he says I genuinely believe... Claim that, isn't it? Yeah. It's a pretty large claim. It certainly have a big ripple effect uh, between Buckingham Palace and Montecito, California, but whether it stretches right the way around the world is, I think, open to question. I genuinely believe that, says the Duke, and that is kind of what is pushing me, and if that does doesn't happen, then that's very sad. Now, he was challenged in the Anderson Cooper interview last night and asked, you know, essentially, how could this reconciliation take place in an environment in which Buckingham Palace can't possibly be certain that he and his wife won't immediately go running to the media and giving interviews disclosing what is said in conversations that take place behind closed doors, and he of course insisted that they started it. I mean, quite literally, I mean, his, his claim was they started it through this 
uh, off-book briefing operation uh, with royal correspondence that he maintains has uh, taken place in the UK. So, you know, very difficult to see how any of this uh, advances. I mean, I suppose the big question here is how it goes down with the American public, and we've not yet seen any reliable data. Uh, We will, of course, get a sense of how interested Americans are in all of this when uh, we start seeing uh, returns from bookshops all over the country and, of course, the online retailers after uh, tomorrow dawns. You know, if this was a normal book tour, there'd be lots more interviews with lots more media coming up, and I suspect there'll be a fair old bit of that, possibly, uh, in the days ahead. I mean, we do know from YouGov surveys last year that Harry and Meghan were more popular here than they are in the UK. But what the impact of this is on all of that, we will have to wait and see. Indeed we will. I'm sure we'll talk about it again. Simon, thank you very much indeed. Have a good Monday. Monetizing digital services since 2004. Boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone. AWG. Where innovation meets monetization.